الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله محمد وآله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس إن وعد الله حق فلا تغرنكم الحياة الدنيا ولا يغرنكم بالله الغرور Sadaq Allah Al-Azim This ayah which I have recited to you In this verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Reminds us all The believers and he reminds the whole mankind Of a promise which he has made He reminds us of this promise because of the fact that Human beings have a tendency of forgetting frequently and sometimes they forget even the most important things in their life. So this is why the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in some verses referring to the Holy Quran, he says that this is a reminder, subhanallah. One of the attributes of the Quran, it is a tazkira. Tazkira means a reminder. Because we as human beings, we need reminders, subhanallah. We often forget. Sometimes the most important things we forget. And if we keep on forgetting the most important things in our lives, then we can't afford to remember them when we die, subhanallah. Because when we die and we return to Allah, we have not done them because we have forgotten them. So we need to be reminded of these things which Allah has placed upon us while we are alive so we can do them. And it will not escape our mind. So what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in this beautiful ayah of the Holy Quran, verse 5 of Surah Al-Fatir? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal nas, O mankind, O mankind, that's the whole mankind, believers, unbelievers, every single one. We are all the children of Adam alayhi salam. Allah says, Inna wa'adallahi haqq. He says, certainly, O mankind, the promise of your Lord is haq, it is the truth. The promise of your Lord is the truth. What promise is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking about in this ayah? When he says, inna wa'ad Allah haq, certainly the promise of Allah, your Lord, is what the truth this promise which Allah has made to mankind and Allah will keep this promise is that that He has sent human beings on the face of the earth at different points in time. People have been coming on the face of the earth from the time of Adam alayhi salam. Nations upon nations have come. People who lived a thousand years ago, two thousand years ago, and people who may live 2,000 years away from now, we don't know. Allah knows how long this world will be again. So people will come at different times. But they will meet up at one time. And that's the promise of Allah. The promise of Allah is that one day, <coughs> there will be Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And one day, there will be Yawm al -Sa And one day, all of you human beings... Who came on the face of the earth at different times. One day all of you will be on the same plane of Hashar. Guarded to account to your Lord. And that's Allah's promise to you. Subhanallah. And Allah will keep his promise. You may have come at different times. Probably when you came on the face of the earth. You know a prophet called Noah alayhi salam. You did not live to see Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when you came, you lived to be a follower of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and did not meet Noah alayhi salam. Yes, you came at different time, but you will all meet up one day for Yawm al-Sa'a, for Yawm al-Qiyamah. 
Allah says that promise is going to come to pass. You will come on the face of the earth, you will become engaged in many things. You will become occupied in many things. But one day, you will stand before your Lord. One day you will stand and have to give an account to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, that day which is coming ahead of us, which is the going towards Allah, which is called the onwards journey, is something that every single human being, he knows about. You know about it and I know about it. We all know that every single human being come, who comes on the face of the earth, we know that that human being will leave and must leave and he can't remain here. Nobody lives forever. We all will go. So we all know we have to take, undertake a journey ahead of us. We might be young when we are required to undertake that journey. We might still be very strong. We might be old. We might be actually unhealthy. No matter what the state might be, the same day Allah had fixed our entrance on the face of the earth is the very same moment Allah had fixed our exit from the face of the earth. So just as we have a time of arrival, we have a time of departure from this world. And nobody, subhanAllah, is doubtful about that. Nobody is doubtful about that. We all know that. So we are living here today. We are engaged in many things. Our ages will be different. Might be young, another person is old, male, female, strong, healthy. You might be suffering from a sickness that you think you will die at any moment. And you may be suffering from no sickness at all, thinking you will have still live about 50 years. And you don't know the next day you will die. <laughs> Even you are the most healthy person, subhanAllah, you will go and the sick man still has about 50 years to go and Allah has him living around to pass his time allotted and Allah alone knows that and we don't know that. But we all know we have to go. So if we know we have to go, the natural thing is that people prepare for leaving, isn't that so? That's the natural thing. Before we came on the face of the earth, our parents prepared for our arrival. Before we came on the face of the earth, our parents prepared for our arrival. Isn't that so? You are married, you're going to have a child. From the time you hear your wife is pregnant, you begin to prepare for your child. Thinking about so many things in your life. Thinking about a child, boy or girl. You know, you will start to shop around. Everybody does that. Fix a room. Buy this and buy that. Subhanallah. And then you will build a whole dream about that child. What I would like that child to be. I want that child to grow up like that. So before you arrived on the face of the earth, people prepared for your arrival. The question is who is going to prepare for your departure? Subhanallah. Would they prepare for your departure who prepared for your arrival? They gave you a welcome. A warm welcome. Subhanallah. They welcome you with warmth and love and kindness when you are ready to leave. Who will welcome you when you are leaving? And how will they welcome you when you are leaving? Subhanallah. Different creatures will welcome you. Will they welcome you with warmth? Will they open their arms to welcome you? Or they will hate you and dislike you? Subhanallah. So this is why it is very important. And this is why Allah reminds us. And he's telling us in this ayat, don't forget that promise you have with me, subhanallah. Don't forget my servants, the appointment I have made with you where you're going to come back to me and you're going to stand in front of me. Don't forget that. But we do forget. We come on the face of the earth. We arrive on the face of the earth. And then although we know one day we have to leave and we are reminded of this. The Holy Quran in every surah of the 114 surahs of the Holy Quran, we are reminded. 
The first verses to be revealed reminded us. The first surah in the Holy Quran reminds us, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Malik Yawm Deen, Master of the Day of Judgment. We are being reminded, Surah Fatiha, every one of us recite so many times in our daily salat, remem remembering and rem being reminded, there is Yawm Deen, there is a day we have to return to Allah. Allah is the Malik and the King of that day. We are not given the chance by Allah to forget, yet we forget, subhanAllah. We are not given the chance to forget. Every rakat, even the rakat where there is no surah, there is surah fatiha. Maliki yawmideen, maliki yawmideen. Every day we hear the adhan, hayya ala al come to success. Success is in prayer. Where do we find success, subhanAllah. We are given a rigorous training every year for one month, 29 or 30 days of fast to remember our objective in life. To remember that this body, subhanallah, is Allah. It belongs to Allah. If Allah orders us not to eat and drink, we'll do it for Allah. So if Allah orders us to prepare for the life hereafter, what is so difficult for that, in that? We keep on forgetting. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us now, after reminding us about this promise that, that, that must be fulfilled, an appointment with him. In fact, the Holy Quran calls the day of judgment, Yawmul Mi'ad. Mi'ad in Arabic means what? The day of appointment. Allah has already made an appointment with you. From the word Wa'ad. Wa'ad means a promise. So when you promise a person, I'll meet you on such a day, that's appointment fixed, isn't that so? So Allah has promised us already, you will meet me, <laughs> subhanAllah. You will meet me. And that is Yawmul Mi'ad, the appointed day, the day of appointment where we'll meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have been hearing about Allah, we worship Allah, we listen to Allah, we obey Allah, we disobey Allah. We do so many things. One day we'll stand face to face. The Prophet ﷺ says, This Allah you have been hearing about, you will stand right in front of him and you will have to render an account of your deeds. No interpreter and translator between you and him. And there will be no barrier between you and Allah. And he will speak to you directly. And he will question you about your deeds. So that day will surely come. Every single person. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what distracts us in this life. He knows very well. He himself has mentioned to us in one ayah that though we know that there is a day of going, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, visit the graveyard regularly. That is a reminder for you to know one day you have to leave. Yesterday you buried your mother. Today you will bury your father. Tomorrow you bury your sister. The next day you will bury your cousin, your uncle, your Jamaat member, and one day people will bury you. Your spot is reserved somewhere in the grave. You don't know where it is. Your spot is there. Subhanallah. So the Prophet ﷺ says, he says, go to the graveyard. Visit it. Because that will be your home tomorrow. Subhanallah. There is where you're going to be. So you will remember. You will take a lesson from those who have passed. Because those people who are buried and they are beneath, they are your friends and family members. They used to sit and eat with you, laugh and talk with you. They are your family members. You worked for them and they worked for you. You respected them. You loved them. They are not here with you. Where are they? Right below there. But you can't talk to them now. You can't meet them. They can't help you. And the only help you can give to them is make dua to Allah for them or ask Allah to bless them in some way from some charitable way or, or the other. You can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do that. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us about ways of not being distracted. And that's, we are distracted with many things. So this, this, these distractions that come in front of us Actually, they make us forget our objective in life. Subhanallah. You know, just think about it. 
We all have children. And normally, you need things from the shop, isn't that so? You send your small child to what? Go to the shop and buy something. One hour passes, two hour passes, three hours, he doesn't return. When you go to meet him, he's playing with his friends on the street. So something distracted him and made him forget what he was sent for. It made him forget his objective, isn't that so? So you, you miscall him. You say, what did I send you for? Where you were supposed to go? He says, sorry, sorry. Allah sent us to prepare for the hereafter and we get mixed up somewhere on the pathway and we forget where we are going, subhanAllah. So when angel of that comes, we say, we want more time. I still have, I need more time. I didn't get what I wanted to get. You know what I was supposed to prepare myself? I didn't because I wasted my time. I got distracted. My friends got me distracted. Now I see you. I remember I have to go and I know that you are here for me. But I'm empty handed. I need to fill my hands. I need to fill my records. So can you give me some more time angel of that? He says, La, no. I have to carry you. Because Allah has fixed the time for your going. And that's now. Whether you have or you don't have, we still have to go. You have to go. Subhanallah. And that's how many people, they leave this world without any good in their good deeds. Without doing any good for themselves. Because people become so distracted in this life, they forget the purpose of life. They forget why they are here. Think about it. Why are we here? We came from Allah and we're going to return to Allah. So what are we doing here? Think about it. You live your whole life and still have to go back to Allah. So what are you doing here? Why are we here? This is the trial Allah wants to put us through. Allah tells us, the hadith tells us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put you on the face of the earth so he may look at your actions. Would you do good? Would you do bad? Would you be obedient or would you be disobedient? Allah tells us how we are distracted, how shaitan deceives us. In one ayah, Allah says, Zuyina linnasi, hubbu shahawati, mina nisai, wal banina, wal qanatir il muqantarati, mina dhahabi, wal fidda, wal khayl il musawamati, wal anami, wal harf. Beautified in the hearts of men. Subhanallah, is the love to follow their own desires. Subhanallah. That's how Allah starts this. Zuyina. Zuyina means something that becomes decorated. Something that is beautiful, it attracts you. It is decorated. It glitters, it shines, it pulls you towards it. This is what Zinat is about. Allah starts the ayah. Zuyina linnasi. Beautified for man. So people look at these things to be really beautiful. What? Hubbu shahawat The love of following your own desires. Allah says that is so beloved to you. Everything your heart wants to do, you do it because you love it. You love it. Your heart tells you do so, you love it, you do it. It tells you do so, you do it because you love it. Subhanallah. Hubbu shahawati The love of following the desires. Min and nisa from women. You love women, do you break Allah's law for fulfilling your desires with women? Because your love is so much. You are bewitched. You forget about Allah. Mina nisai, wal banina, and children. Your love for women and children and love for family, subhanallah. Wal qanatir il muqantarati mina dhahabi wal fidha. And your love for heaps of gold and silver, your love for money and wealth has blinded you to your service towards Allah. That is what Allah says. Allah has given you enough to survive on, but you want more. He gives you more, but you become greedy and you want more. And you get more for a next whole year and you still want more. And you keep on being greedy and greedy and greedy. And you will even destroy the lives of your close and dear ones for the sake of getting it. You will even do wrong things to get it. You will even actually do haram things to get it. Because the love for it is in your hearts. Subhanallah. Allah says that. It has been decorated. 
So you know what is right and wrong, but you prefer to do wrong because the wrong that the love for it is in your heart. And mark horses. Well, an arm and cattle is an animal. In those days, their means of transport that they found, they used to be proud about was beautiful horses. Fast horses. Beautiful horses. Pretty horses. They, that was the pride of the Arabs and the people of those days. But what Khail al Musawa means, and your modes of transport that you take pride in. So our mode of transport is no longer horses and camels. It's the vehicles that we own. We take pride in them. We adore them. We look up to these. We treat them like a baby. <laughs> you buy a new brand vehicle. You love it. Your small innocent son takes something and scratches it. You become so angry you will want to beat him and kill him. You value this material thing more than this flesh and blood that you have there. Nobody can touch it. Nobody can touch it. That's what Allah says. The love for it has penetrated your heart. You forget reality. You will die. This will be destroyed. You'll return to Allah. When you go back to Allah, you won't have your car anymore. But your son can stand up before Allah and say, Oh Allah, my father was unjust to me. My father oppressed me. My father used to beat me, oh Allah, I was innocent. The car wouldn't be there, your son will be there to complain to Allah. This is why the scholar says, don't be unjust to anybody. Our own family, sometimes we'll treat them by wallah. Our own family will stand against us and complain to Allah. Your little son or daughter that you may have not treated well, they will be given the right to speak, every human being. Allah will make an announcement to the angel, anyone, who has been treated in an unfair and unjust manner by anyone, stand up and speak. Stand up. Today is the day of justice. Allah will give justice even to the animals. Allah will give justice even to the animals. The hadith says that some people will form a line going to Jannah because their records show that they are, they are good. They have more good deeds than bad. So based on that, if you have more good than bad, you will go to Jannah. Subhanallah, your good deeds outweigh the bad deeds by the scale, you will go to Jannah. But while they will be forming the line and they will be going, while they are walking, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, even at that moment Allah will say, is there anyone who has anything against any one of them? Today is the day of justice. Justice must be served. Then while they will be walking, somebody will say, oh Allah, this man cheated me. Oh Allah, I want my due today. Another man will say, this man owes me. Oh Allah. Another man will say, this man used to curse me. Oh Allah. This man took away my stuff. This man, oh, subhanallah. And then while we were on our way to John Jannah, now we are pulled back. Allah will say, what is this person saying? Is that the truth? Nobody will lie then their dues will be taken away from this person. And that man who stood up on the day of judgment as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, with so much good deeds, huge as mountains, will be bankrupt because he will go straight down to the ground. Everyone you have done wrong to, they will pull away your good deeds from you. Allah will give it. This is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he said in this world, if you have done anything wrong to anyone, a family member, husband to wife, wife to husband, parents to children, children to parents, anybody, then make up for it right here in this world before you die. Because in the day of, on the day of judgment, it will be a day, la dirhama wa la dinara. It wouldn't be compensation through money. No. No money, no dollars, no cents. It will be your deeds will be taken away. Your good deeds. And here is it. We are struggling to build our good deeds. Coming for salat, performing salat. We want to build our deeds. Giving sadaqah and charity. Fasting in the month of Ramadan. And a man may live for 60 or 70 years. Piling up good deeds. So who can be a bigger loser than him? When he stands with that thinking that he's happy, it's diminishing, diminishing and going down 
because Brother Zaid is coming to ask for his due. Brother Kareem is coming to ask for his due. Brother Ahmad is coming and complaining, Oh Allah, this man did something wrong to me. Oh Allah, this man still owes me money. I loan him on the face of the earth. And then all of that will just come down to the bottom and without. And then the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, if all your good deeds have been given out in order to compensate for the wrongs that you have done to others, and there remain not a single good deed again, and still people are asking, and say, Allah, but this man did this, I want justice today. You know what the Prophet says? Their sins will be taken and thrown on your head. You will have to suffer the consequences of that. Because Allah loves justice. And justice must be served. This is why the Prophet ﷺ said, The injustice that you do on the face of the earth will turn into many layers of injustices and darkness on the day of judgment. Subhanallah. So therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the, these things have been beautified in the hearts of people. Subhanallah. What? Your love for wealth, your love for women, your love for children, your love for gold and silver, your love for transport, subhanallah, wal-an'am and animals and vegetation and crops. Allah says, these things have been decorated in your heart, so you go after them, subhanallah. The heart goes, you know you have to perform salat, but something comes and these things become more important to you. You know that somebody is telling you, brother, what you're doing is haram. You, you have to stop it. But your heart is so connected to it. You just can't leave it. Allahu Akbar. May Allah protect us. You know. Yet, na'uzu billah. You know, I mean, wrongdoings are so clear. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, inna al-halala bayinun wal haram bayinun. The halal is already clear. The haram is already clear. If it's clear, then it will be easy for people to stay away. But people are not staying away because their hearts are leaning towards it. So this is why Allah tells us in the Quran, in the ayah I was quoting, where he says, Ya nasu inna wa'ad Allahi haq. Oh, those, oh mankind, the promise of your Lord is the truth. You would meet Allah. You would go back to Allah. You will stand in front of Allah. There is no doubt about that. So then Allah tells us. He gives us a beautiful advice. He says, فَلَا تَغُرَّنَّكُمُ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا Let not the worldly life deceive you about that promise which Allah has made with you. Let not the dunya and the worldly life distract you from remembering that promise that you have, Allah has made with you on that appointed day. So, because this, this is what the ayah spoke of. This is the worldly life. Wealth, transport, gold, silver, desires, women, and all these things. And these things have been made decorated to human beings. So they distract him. They make the human being forgetful. They make the believer forgetful. So Allah is telling us now, you will come back to me. You will stand before me. And I will question you. But there are certain things that are causing you to be distracted. Your attention is diverted from what you're supposed to focus on. And these are the two things. So Allah says, do not let the worldly life deceive you. And do not let the chief deceiver deceive you. Who is the chief deceiver? Shaitan. Shaitan deceives you. Every good thing you want to do, he comes and he spoils your niyat. He moves your heart away. He moves your mind away. Even the Quran says, if you are intending to give sadaqah, he comes and he puts his waswasa in your brain and your mind telling you, if you give, you will become poor. Every good thing you intend to do, he comes and he changes your heart. He changes your mind. So he is the chief deceiver. So therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He warns us here in the Holy Quran. He tells us about what deceives us. He tells us about what takes our attention away. And if we do not, subhanallah, 
listen to what Allah has mentioned to us, then we will be losers in this life and the life hereafter. Because no matter what type of life we live, we have to stand before Allah, we have to return to Allah. Subhanallah. All our deeds will be placed before Allah. And when we look at the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also worked on his companions and by extension he worked on us. In what way? He worked on us so that we will not be continuously distracted from our goal and our objective in our lives. Because when we are distracted, then our attention is diverted in another direction. So if you are going in a particular way, and things begin to happen, you move away from that course and you go on another course and sometimes you destroy your own self. So sometimes what happens? You know many people, they grow up, young people, they have been trained by their parents to be good Muslims, alhamdulillah. Isn't that so? Going to masjid, salat five times a day. Our, be our beloved sisters covering themselves properly, being obedient to Allah, fasting in the month of Ramadan. Good. Then they grow up past that teenage, going into adulthood, the early 20s, where attractions begin to come. Friends, music, entertainment, pleasure, and everything they have worked for, it just leaves them and they go. Salat is no longer in their life. Hijab is out. Islam is out also in some cases. Islam is foreign to them. Islam is an alien to them now. Now they begin to criticize Islam, subhanallah. That's the reality. See, sometimes you are walking on a good path. These distractions come. They pull you away and you begin to walk on the path of the fire. You end up there. This is why when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw Things that would have distracted the Sahabas. He will immediately pull them back to seriousness. And there is this beautiful tradition that gives us a lot. But deeper than what it gives us is the message and the intent of the Rasul of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Once he came to the masjid like when we come to the masjid. And when he came to the masjid, he saw some young children and other people at the back of the masjid laughing with each other. Giggling and gargling. You're in the house of Allah. But you know, sharing a joke. But you're in the house of Allah. This is not a place to laugh and giggle and gargle. This is not a place to share a joke, isn't that so? Why did you come to the masjid? It's for the ibadat of Allah. That's what is done in the masjid. You don't buy and sell. You don't tell jokes here. You don't. So he saw that they were being distracted. Subhanallah. So what did he say? He said that if you remember your death often, I wouldn't see you like this. He immediately saw that they were being distracted. Seriousness was leaving in their heart. He brought something in front of them to hit them hard. That if you remember one day you will die, you wouldn't find the time to laugh and giggle like this. And in Allah's house, then he quoted the hadith. Beautiful hadith which has been recorded in many books. He says, Lam yati yawman. Not a single day that passes except the grave does not talk. Allahu Akbar. What did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? Not a single day passes except the grave does not talk. What does the grave say? These are the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from an authentic hadith. He said, the grave says every single day. I am a house of solitude. And I am a house of loneliness. Subhanallah. He says, Oh man, I am the house of dirt. And I am the house of worms. Inside of me you will find worms. The grave is speaking to us. We can't hear. He says, that's who I am. Every one of us, we must go there, isn't that so? And the grave is telling us up front about itself. So we'll know what we are going into. Then the Prophet says, فَإِذَا دُفِنَ الْعَبْدُ الْمُؤْمِنِ When the believer is buried in the grave, قَالَ لَهُ الْقَبَرِ 
The grave begins to speak to the believer now. What does the grave say? Marhaban wa ahla. Welcome, welcome a servant of Allah. The grave is welcoming Allahu Akbar. Ama in kunta ahamba man yamshi ala dhahri ilayya. He says that from among those walking on top of me, you were the most beloved to me. You are a believer. You worship your Lord. Subhanallah. You were the most beloved to me. فَإِذَا وُلِّيْتَ الْيَوْمِ Now that you have been entrusted to me, and you have come into me, فَسَتَرَى صَنِعِي بِكَ You will see how I treat you and how I entertain you. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. This is what the grave is saying to the believer. The Prophet ﷺ said, فَيَتَّسِعُ لَهُ مَدَّ بَصْرِهِ then the grave starts to expand and widen. And it goes so wide as far as his eyes can see. And a door towards Jannah is open and the breeze from Jannah starts to enter into the grave while he's there in the state of barzakh, subhanAllah. It's different. The Prophet ﷺ said, وَإِذَا دُفِنَ الْعَبْدَ الْفَاجِرِ أو الْكَافِرِ But when a sinful servant, a believer, but sinful is placed in the grave, or an unbeliever is placed in the grave, قَالَ لَهُ الْقَبَرِ The grave speaks to the unbeliever, or the sinful man, or the transgressor. لَا مَرْحَبًا وَلَا أَهْلًا There is no welcome for you. There is no welcome for you today by me. أَمَا إِنْ كُنْتَ لَا أَبْغَضُ مَنْ يَمْشِي عَلَى ظَهْرِ إِلَيَّ Of all the people walking on me, you are the worst of them all to me. You are disobedient to your Lord. You are negligent in your duties. So you are the worst towards me. فَإِذَا وُلِّيْتَكَ الْيَوْمَ وَصِرْتَ إِلَيَّ Now that you have been entrusted to me, فَسَتَرَى صَنِعِ بِكَ You will see how I treat you. Then what happens? The Prophet ﷺ says, قَالَ فَيَلْتَئِمُ إِلَيْهِ حَتَّى يَلْتَقَ يَلْتَقِ عَلَيْهِ وَتَخْتَلِفَ أَضْلَعُهُ Then the grave starts to squeeze him in. We bury a body, you have two sides of the wall. The body goes through the hole, rests in the bottom. You have a right side and a left side. The Rasul ﷺ says, these two sides starts to close in into him. It squeezes him. The Prophet places his fingers and interlocked it like this. It squeezes him so much that the ribs of one side of the body, it starts to enter into the ribs and he begins to scream and cry and bawl with pain. At that time, that is what happens with that one that the grave didn't welcome. He says, and this goes on until the day of judgment for him. Then the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, إِنَّمَا الْقَبْرُ رَوْضَةٌ مِّنْ رِيَاذِ الْجَنَّةِ أَوْ حُفْرَةٌ مِّنْ حُفْرِ النَّارِ He says the grave. The grave is either a garden from among the gardens of paradise or a pit from among the pits of the fire of hell. So when did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? And why? To bring seriousness in the minds of people. And so too, these are the things that bring seriousness to us also. Because there are so many distractions around us, isn't that so? We at home, this is the season of the World Cup. When we are at home, how, much, how many matches we watch? Quite a few, I will guess. I'm not asking you for you to answer. I'm thinking that might be the case, but I hope it's not. But just look at it. And Salah time comes in Zuhar and we hear the Adhan and we are still sitting there. And we say when it's finished I will attend to my Salat. And we give priority to a game above Allah's hukum. This is a reality. This is a reality of some people. Giving priority? You think Allah doesn't look at this? You think the angel doesn't record that? And then the book will be handed on the day of judgment at the time of Salat, what we were doing and what we were engaging. When it was time for us to stand up and devote ourselves for the ibadah of Allah, what took priority in our life? What were the things that we really 
we looked at as the most important thing in our life? Was it that Allah's deen was always behind? Was it always second and there was something that was first? Was it our own desires that we fulfill and then the laws of Allah? My dear beloved brothers and my dear sisters, the moral and the maqsad, which is a lesson to me, there are many things that distract us in this world. We are always distracted. This is why we find the masjid always empty. Programs and functions are always empty. Isn't that so? Big programs, lecturers come, places empty. Where are the Muslims? Ain al Muslimuna. Where are the Muslims? When you look at these big crusades taking place, it's packed. Unbelievers have no deen, not on the right path. And then they love that so much. And we who are the right path, where are our hearts? Where is our deen? Where is our Islam? Where is our fear of Allah? Why are we Muslims? What are we doing for Islam? Where are our children? Allahu Akbar. That's the question. And it goes on and it goes on and goes on. And you know, we see Muslims being kicked from pillar to post. We cry. But really, how strong is our deen as Muslims on the face of the earth? If our deen is weak, then subhanallah, what do we expect? Allah's help will not come. We are too distracted. We are distracted always with work, with TV, with video, subhanallah. People come to masjid here. Program is going, they're on the phone right through, subhanallah. Lecture, khutbah is going on, subhanallah. You come in to serve Allah and what you are serving. What is distracting you? Allahu Akbar. That's the question. What is stealing your heart from Allah? What is pulling you away from Allah? That's the question we have to ask ourselves. How long again we have to live on the face of the earth to make amends for what we have not done of good of the past? We have to check ourselves. We have to check ourselves. Because for some of us, our, our Islam is not becoming stronger. It's becoming weaker and weaker and weaker. We think that, yes, we are Muslims, but in the sight of Allah, who are we really? We beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen our iman. And we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen our family members with Islam also. And the whole ummah. So that Islam will regain that honor and glory that Allah had given to it in the early times. When Islam was a power and an empire to be reckoned with. When Islam controlled dynasties and empires, Allahu Akbar. The great days of Umar, the great days of Uthman, the great days of Ali, the days when Islam ruled China and Spain and all these places. And now Islam can hardly rule one place, subhanAllah. Why? Because the Muslims have destroyed their own selves because of their conduct and their turning away from the way of Allah. And that can only come back when we turn towards Allah. Because Allah is the owner of the heavens and the earth. And if you do something that Allah loves, Allah will give you something. But if you do something he hates, he will pull away something that he has given to you. And that is what Allah has done with the Muslim Ummah on the face of the earth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us, forgive the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Bring us on the path of goodness, bring us on the path of glory like the olden days. Subhanallah, that nobody will have the courage to take advantage of any single Muslim on the face of the earth. May Allah bring back those times. Subhanallah.